Hey kids, so recently I learned a new in-game technique. It's not new, it's been around for a while, but it was new to me. And so I thought it might be something interesting for you all as well. One of the things that's really important as you move through the middle game and into the end game is to know your end game positions and to know what positions will turn into a win and what positions will turn into a lose. So you can think through your moves even during the middle game as saying, okay, if I do this, then if I get to this end game, I'll win. Or if I do this, if I get to this end game, I'll draw instead of win. Or vice versa, I'll draw instead of lose. So you want to be able to know some of these end game positions pretty well. That's kind of why we went over that knight holding the draw against the pawn last time. In this one, we're going to look at something called bear's rule. Bear's rule is an end game idea where you have two pawns versus one pawn. And so if you have one pawn, you're trying to hold the draw. If you have two pawns, you're trying to hold the win. But this is a very specific situation. In this case, the attacker has a rook pawn and a passed pawn. So not, not adjacent to the, to the rook pawn, but a passer. And the defender just has the rook pawn and has been trying to prevent that passer from promoting. And so the rook pawns have to be blocked. So that's the first condition for bear's rule. The attacker's rook pawn can't have crossed the middle of the board. If the attacker's rook pawn has crossed the middle of the board, the attacker should win. Okay, But if the attacker's pawn has not crossed the middle of the board yet, the defender has a chance of drawing. Okay, The other condition you want to look for is that the attacking king is directly adjacent to his passed pawn. And the defending king is either directly opposed to that attacking king or directly opposed to the pawn. Okay, So those are the three conditions we're looking for. The attacker's rook pawn hasn't crossed the center of the board. The attacker's king is adjacent to the passed pawn. And the defender's king is opposed to the attacker's king or opposed to the attacker's pawn. And we're going to look at in what situations does this turn into a win for the attacker? And in what situations does this turn into a draw for the attacker? So we're going to start by looking at this position. Okay, so notice this is a position that satisfies Bear's rule. We have rook pawns on the side. The attacker in this case is white because white has the two pawns. And the black is the defender. The attacker's pawn has not crossed the middle of the board. So it's blocked here at the middle, but it has not crossed the middle. The attacker's king is adjacent to the passed pawn. And the defender's king is opposed to the attacker's king or the attacker's uh, pawn. It doesn't really matter which square you're on because as soon as the attacker comes over to snag this pawn, you're, the defender's king is gonna step up and try to take this pawn. So now how do we figure out if this is gonna be a win or a draw? Well, it all depends on the king's racing. So if the king, if the defending king is able to race around and either get behind this pawn or prevent the attacker's king from getting away from it, then there's a draw. But if the attacking king is able to shoulder off the defending king and prevent the defending king from intruding, then the attacker wins. So the way to tell this very quickly is to draw a couple of diagonal lines. Starting from the defending pawn, draw a diagonal line backwards, two squares, and then draw another diagonal line forward to the edge of the board. Okay, now this is going to seem really counterintuitive. If the attacker's pawn has gone further than this diagonal line, that second diagonal line, if it's gone further, then it's a draw. Because what that means is the defending king is starting close enough to his side of the board that he's going to be able to get around the attacking king and get to the back in time to block the pawn from promoting. But if the pawn is on or behind this line, then the attacking king is going to be able to shoulder the defending king and prevent the defending king from intruding. So let's see how this plays out. Now notice, remember, we have, in this case, we have uh, a situation where this should be a draw for black. Black should hold the draw. Let's see if that plays out this way. So white moves and black moves, okay? Notice white's coming over to take the pawn, black is coming over to take this pawn. 
white moves, black moves. Now you're looking at this and you're saying, wow, the black king is so far away. But watch what happens. The black king immediately starts moving along this diagonal. Remember, this diagonal is now behind the diagonal we drew last time. Okay. Continues to move along the diagonal. Okay. And then when white king tries to step up, black king is able to get behind that diagonal. Okay. And so now, if white king tries to protect the square, black king can trap white's king there. If white king, white pawn tries to move, black king just steps back. Okay. And so notice there's no way for white to get a win in this position. This becomes a draw. Right. At that point, the game is over. Okay, so that, all, that only happened because the black king started back far enough to get around behind the white king. Okay, so let's put, this is a very similar position, but this time I've moved the pawn back one space. So look, now that pawn is on the diagonal. If it's on or behind, we say the black king is not going to be able to get around behind the white king. So let's see how this one plays out. White king steps over, black king comes to attack. Now black king again tries to take that diagonal to get behind. But notice when black is on the diagonal, white king steps directly opposed to the black king. And so now the black king can't get around. Once white king gets to this position, the pawn is able to promote freely and I would hope that each of you know how to win with a king and a queen at this point. So you should be good from there. Okay, so let's take an, another example. Now, does this satisfy the conditions for bear's rule? Okay, well, in this case, it does not. Even though if I draw the lines, the diagonal lines, right, it's, it's like, oh, okay, it's, it's, it's a head. Does black have a draw? Black does not have a draw in this case. The reason is the attacking pawn on the rook, the rook pawn on the attacker, has gone past the middle of the board. So when black tries to come along this diagonal, he gets stuck because the black's not out allowed to go off the edge of the board, right? And so he's gonna get stuck and white king's gonna be able to stop him. All right, so again, we can see how this plays out. White moves, black moves, white moves, black captures the pawn, white moves, Black tries to go back along that diagonal to try to get around behind. And it would work if black was allowed to go off the board, but we're not allowed to go off the board. So white wins in this case. So it's, that's why it's so important to make sure that you block that rook pawn from going across the midway point in the board early in the game. So unless you expect that person is using that pawn to try to pry open your castle, if you think that those rook pawns are going to be important later in the game, you want to make sure that your opponent's rook pawn has not crossed the middle of the board. Now, if you are up a pawn and you think it's going to come down to rook pawns versus another with you having a passed pawn, you have to make sure your passed pawn doesn't go too far down the edge of the board because you can't move pawns backwards. And so if the pawn is too far down the board, you might not be able to get the win if your rook pawn wasn't already halfway across. All right, let's take a look at this position. If you were black, then what do you do here? Hopefully it should be very obvious. Black wants to prevent this pawn from moving to the other side of the board. And so black steps up, right? At this point, unfortunately for black, it's still going to be a win for white, right? Now, if we had a situation where we had everything shifted a little bit up here. Again, Black's main idea is he needs to move the pawn and that way this pawn is too far gone and white can and black will be able to hold this draw. Okay? So if you have that chance, prevent your opponent from getting their rook pawn across that halfway spot. 
All right, what about this? Now, okay, I've mixed this one up a little bit, so I want you to think about this. Is this a win for white, a win for black, or a draw? All right, so pause the video, think through it real quick, see if you can identify, does this meet Bear's conditions? If so, who is the attacker, who is the defender, and is the pawn, the passed pawn, back far enough that the attacker will be able to uh, shoulder out the defending king. All right, pause your video real quick, see what you think. Okay, you got an answer? All right, hopefully you recognize this does satisfy Bear's rule. The pawns, the rook pawns are blocked. Neither have crossed the middle of the board. We've got the attacking king. The attacker is black in this case. The attacking king is adjacent to his own pawn. The defending king is opposed to that pawn. And so then we have to look, does this satisfy Bear's rule? And the answer is yes. This black pawn actually could be even one step further down the board and still be okay. So notice, if black moves, white steps in to snack, and then black immediately shoulders out the white king. You can even make a pawn move before stepping down to shoulder him out again. And now white is unable to stop the black pawn from queening, and black wins this game. Okay, so hopefully this is really helpful to you. Like I said, it was kind of new to me. I thought it was kind of neat to be able to look at just where some pawns are and know whether it's a winning end game or a drawn end game or a lost end game. And so keep this in mind in the middle of your game though, because it doesn't do any good to know how the end game is going to play out if you don't plan for it in the middle game. When all the other pieces are on the board, if you see your opponent pushing that rook pawn down, you get out of stop them. And if you're up a pawn, if you can get your pawn past that middle line, uh, your rook pawn past that middle line, or if you can make sure your other pawn stays back far enough that you're going to be able to shoulder out the king, then you can turn these just pawn advantage games into wins. Or if you're on the, the losing end of it, you can turn it into a draw. All right. See if that comes up into your game sometime. Really try to pay attention. Hopefully that's helpful to you. And uh, we'll see you next time.